Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's event. I'm Yulia from Expressia. Expressia is an online customer journey mapping platform where you can visualize your customers' journeys, create personas and impact maps, and invite teammates to collaborate in real time. Today, we're going to explore the power of presentations. Building a journey map is a huge piece of work on its own, but the process doesn't actually stop there. To implement the changes, you have to present it to customers, colleagues, or other stakeholders and make that story both powerful and memorable. Our today's expert specializes in designing value and connection into every experience, whether it is a customer, employee, corporation, or individual. With a diverse background from business economics to computer sciences, from custom experience to public speaking and coaching, she delivers revolutionary originality to brands and businesses. The rest, I leave to her. Welcome everyone, Managing Director of Brand Love, Chantelle Botha. Thank you for that introduction. I, uh, I still blush when I'm called an expert because I don't see myself as an expert at anything. I see myself as a lifelong learner. So I'm so delighted to be with you today. And I want to uh, share with you a few things. We're gonna do a workshop. So if you're registered for the session, and you are not expecting to work, then maybe you're not in the right place. So I want to ask you to make sure that you've got some paper with you. All right, so just normal printer paper. Uh, make sure that you've got some loose pages because we're gonna be doing some origami a little bit later where you're gonna plan your uh, presentations. We also gonna give away some prizes. Hey, Yulia, we're gonna give away some prizes. I recently published a book on Amazon and you'll get copies of the book on PDF as well as a video companion guide. So we wanna bring a bit of competition spirit into this today. All right, fantastic. I'm seeing some people from places that I love. Joseph, San Diego is like my very, very favorite place. I had the pleasure of spending some time there. So uh, I'm so delighted for you all to join us today. Fantastic. So, Julia, would you start us off with just, you know, people connecting with each other? So we're going to put you in a breakaway room for about six minutes. And um, you're going to be with two other, we call them Zoom angels, because we don't know who Zoom's going to put you with, all right? And uh, those Zoom angels have been chosen today uh, to meet you. So I want you to, when you land in your room, I want you, first of all, to flick on your camera, smile at each other, all right? And then you are going to say your name. You're going to share what is the hardest part of driving customer centered change for you. So what's the hardest part? And the second thing I'd like you to, to share is what are you grateful for? Like maybe a, a, a hardship that's actually turned into a gift, you know? So what, what was tough in the last week that you can actually now look at it and say, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that experience. All right, everybody clear? You're going to go into your breakout rooms. You're going to meet some fabulous folks. Flip on your camera, smile, say your name. What is the tough thing about driving change? And then one thing you're grateful for. All right, so six minutes, you've each got two minutes. So make sure you share the time uh, equally. And I'll see you back here in a little bit. Thanks, Yulia. Amazing. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, I'm seeing, uh, where's that lovely, where's that lovely child? Whose son is that? Oh, I'm seeing a, a few familiar faces. Amazing. I'm seeing people. And hello, Juliet. I see Juliet. I see Olga. Hi. Oh, it's so nice to have such familiar faces here. All righty. Excellent. Is that everyone back? Hi, Tess. I'm seeing you as well. Thank you for my cheerleaders here in South Africa that's uh, supporting us. Amazing. Vidiana. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so let's start with our formal proceedings. Make sure everyone, if I, if you hopped on a little bit late, you're going to need some paper. All right, we're going to do something with a pen and paper later. So grab yourself a, uh, a, a page that you can fold and you can tear. All right, so we're going to use a few unconventional methods 
uh, this evening to help you improve your presentation style. All right. So I want to just start by sharing my screen with you and I'm going to knock Johan off there. Johan, if you can just quickly stop sharing. Fantastic. Excellent. So we are gathered here together uh, this evening. Let me just get it. Yulia, are you seeing my slides? All right. Fantastic. So we're going to talk about you know, how to tell the story of your journeys. I've been uh, doing this job for uh, 15 years and I want to share with you some of the mistakes I've made uh, in presenting journeys. And I want to share with you just an impactful way to plan your presentation so that you get by into your ideas. I think I tell the story often of you know, standing next to this graveyard of ideas. Uh, and I know about 10% of the ideas will be implemented. And I think what, what my challenge has been is to push that up, to get enough mind space and to get enough heart space for people to buy into the ideas. All right, so uh, when I uh, often look at presentations, um, Although Julia knows I love the Expressia. It's, it's like the most beautiful tool. I remember the first time I used it, I went like, this is beautiful with so little effort. All right, so the tool is beautiful, but if I catch you presenting a map like this, all right, I will find you. I will find you and I'm gonna delete your PowerPoint or your keynote presentation. All right, so this is not what we want because I could see you all on the screen going like this. You give me, you give me like small squinted eyes. All right, when we have small squinted eyes, that's not a great start to a presentation. All right, so we know some of you have had actually quite a, quite a long day. So let me quickly tell you how we're gonna make these four, uh, these four hours, these two hours impactful with four topics. All right, so the first one, is we're going to look at presentations today and look at what's wrong. Then we're going to, I'm going to share with you a blueprint for change. And it's important. Often we forget the context within which we operate. Then we're going to do some journey and presentation origami. And I hope you're going to love this exercise. My peeps from South Africa and from Kenya have done this with me. I see my peeps waving there. And then you will get an opportunity to pitch your journey. All right, so we're going to look for some volunteers and these volunteers, they will be winners. They will walk away with a copy of my book and the video guide and it's and it's really entertaining. All right, so how we're going to work is the artifacts that you create this evening. All right, to be in this prize draw, you need to post them to this to this group. All right, we will not spam you on this group. We will not get people to give you like obscene phone calls or stalk you or do some funky shit with your information. Okay. We will use it just for the purposes of this session. All right. So you want to lift your phone and you want to uh, quickly scan that QR code. All righty. Point your phone, scan that QR code, and you're going to be sending some of your amazing work to us later. Alrighty. Oh, I'm sorry. So someone's on their phone. So what we'll do is we'll actually get the link to that group and we'll send it to you. All right. So you can do it afterwards. All right. You can join that group and we can do that. We can do that afterwards. We're going to, we're going to copy that link into the, the chat in a little bit. All right. So that's the one thing you want to scan. Then the next thing, okay, we're going to do a bit of a warm up. So what I want to ask you to do next is scan that QR code and we're going to use a tool called Menti, right? A lot of you have used Menti before. So again, I'm sorry if you're on your phone, you're most likely not going to be able to use Menti unless you've got a computer nearby and you can open a browser. All right. So in order for us to do, to do a little bit of a warm up, once you get onto Menti, we've asked you the question, where are you? But I want to know how many meetings 
everybody on Menti, my team, if you can maybe just put a link in the code into the chat. All right, I want to know how many meetings did you have today? How many meetings did you have today? All right, and I'm just going to, if you if you've grab that code, I'm going to share a different screen with you so you can see what everyone uh, answering here. So how many meetings did you have today? Five people had one to three meetings. One person had four to six meetings. Oh my word. One person had seven to nine meetings. Fantastic. So the folks that are on the chat, perfect. Pork, thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Two people had seven to nine meetings. Oh, so we have a ton of meetings these days. Do you feel a bit fatigued? Give me a yellow thumb on, on Zoom if you feel a bit fatigued. Yeah. All righty. There's a few people that are managing their... Oh, well, there we go. A few people that are managing their day a little bit better than what I am. Four to six meetings. All righty. Every hour on the hour. Olga, <laughs> when do you have a snack? <laughs> All right. Great. So let's look at the next question. So how many hours have you sat in front of your computer today? Even if you didn't have meetings, how many hours did you sit in front of your computer? Oi, more than 10 hours. A lot of people have sat eight to 10 hours because we're not traveling. We sit a lot more. Sure. Look at that. That's a lot of sitting. Give me a yellow thumb if you've got a standing desk. Who's got a standing desk? All right. I see a few people have got a standing desk. Okay. So how many emails did you respond to today? Less than five. Bless you. Oh, 20 to 30 emails. Sure, that's rough. More than 30 emails. All right, 15 emails. Oh, I see. Brittany's saying it's only 10 a.m. Yeah, Brittany, there's a shitload of emails still to come in, eh? All righty. Sure, I love these folks here on the lower end. All right, I hear you. So a lot of people use Teams and Zoom instead of email. Yeah. All right, how many PowerPoint slides did you see presented today? Or did you present today? Who gets into meetings and people present like, I don't know, 50 slides, 80 slides? Ugh. None, that's wonderful. Two or three decks. None. None yet. Good for you. That's not too bad. Eight, twenty, three. Oh, wow. Who's that? Pork is saying, sat through a workshop with 167 slides. <laughs> oh, my word. Hectic, hectic. And how is the energy at the end of that? <laughs> not so not so good. Not so good. All right. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment here. And we are gonna we are gonna show you amazing energizers. So I'm gonna ask Marali, my colleague, to join me here. And Johan, I'm I'm stopping my screen sharing. So if you can just get ready for us to uh, to play some music for us. All right, so we want to show you just a, uh, a way that you can increase your performance. So our biggest challenge at the moment is energy, all right? And we, contrary to what I believed, we don't generate energy through eating. I wanted to believe that, all right? We generate energy through being active and oxygen in our cells. All right, so Marily and I, and Marily, um, I'm going to just... Uh, See if we can spotlight, we can spotlight you. So Marilee's going to 
lead us through an exercise called Egoscue. And she's going to make us feel better. Like in five minutes, you are going to feel so much better. Okay, Marley, go for it. Okay, great. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to ask everybody to please join me and stand up. I don't want you to get up like this. A little bit of energy like, yes, let's stand up and get ready. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna start with something called Egoscue. And basically what it does, it just helps us to get our posture right um, so that our, our major joints are in alignment again. Because if we sit the whole day and we sit in front of the computer or we just watch a screen, we, we get out of balance. All right, so once you've stood up, I want you to take your feet about a fist apart from each other, toes in just five, five degrees, not a lot, okay? Just a little bit in, just let your hands drop and just close your eyes and just get a feel of your balance, okay? Where's the most um, pressure? Is it on your left or your right foot? Is it to the front or the back of your foot? Just get a sense of where you are. Right, okay. So you, I hope that, uh, that you are in balance, but if you're not, we're gonna try and fix that and help you, right. So the first thing we're gonna do is a bit of a stretch. I want you to put your thumbs out like this. Okay, thumbs up, fantastic. And then we're making bear claws like this, all right. I'm gonna actually lose my jacket <laughs> so I can show you. Then you're gonna put your hands to your temples, your thumbs down like this, great. Okay, and then we're gonna just slowly go as far as you can back and front, back and front. Okay, awesome. Feel that stretch. Your, your toes are still five degrees turned inside. Okay. Well done, a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Well done, Tess, I see you, <laughs> doing good. Okay, now we're gonna do a bit of arm, um, arm pumps, right? I want you to do this again, okay? Big claws and your arms out to the side with your palms facing down, okay? And then we're gonna do small circles. We're gonna start slow. Your feet are still the same as before. Now I'm gonna ask you how to pump the music. We're gonna go a little bit faster. As fast as you can, let's go. Okay, let's go, let's go. Well done. It's better when you smile. Hey, a little bit more. Doing good. Don't you do it. <laughs> Come on, Samuel. <clears throat> right, a little bit longer. We've got this. Hey, well done, well done. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. Palms up. And we're gonna go backwards. Small circles to the back. Let's go. We've got this. Let's go. Woo! Thanks, DJ. Um, I know it might be burning, but that's a good thing. So a little bit longer, you've got it. Okay, well done. Just check it out, check it out. Okay. We're going to do one last thing. Okay. We're going we're gonna to run, but we're going to run on one spot. So you're going to put your one foot in front of the other one as if in a stance of, of running, okay? Your back foot, just lift your heel a little bit so that your heel is off the ground just a little bit, okay? And then you have your arms next to you and we're gonna do a slow warm up run just on one space. You're not gonna move, just your arms. Johan, if we can get some music. Okay, let's go a little bit faster. Come on, let's go, let's go. This is a 100 meter race, come on. Woo! Okay, go, go, go! Woo! A little bit longer, come on! Keep your fingers! Back leg a little bit off the ground. And then we're 
Here we go. balance has shifted and if it has shifted or not let's get a sense how do you feel now good well done thank you for playing along I hope you're feeling great Chantal over to you all right fantastic so that is your first secret to presenting all right you fill your own body with oxygen. You fill your audience's body with oxygen. Not only are you going to feel better, but you're going to be a lot more interesting and they're going to listen well to you. All right. So I want to take a moment and just let us just understand, you know, what is our challenge today with presenting journey maps? All right. And I'm going to share, Jan, if you could just stop sharing the screen. I'm going to just ask you a few questions again, and if you could help me answer these. So go to menti.com, use the code 4828532, and please answer these questions with the rest of the participants in this room. So what are your challenges today with presenting journey maps? So talking too fast and too much information, absolutely. Structuring for the best resolution into exposing the insights while highlighting the problems and opportunities. Absolutely. Let's get some more answers there. <laughs> Who's that? I'm boring. Nobody's boring. All right. Only the presentations that you put together are boring. All right. So <laughs> whoever had the courage to put this on here. Okay. I'm actually, if you're willing, to identify yourself, I am more than willing to spend a coaching hour with you, convincing you that you are not boring. All right. So hit me up with a private chat and we can sort you out. <laughs> All right. So nerves, unexpected questions, structure to show the value. Too many details from different stakeholders, explaining the process at the right level of detail. Team members not understanding. All right. Questions. Seems like we're all afraid of questions that we might not be able to answer. And sometimes, you know, fear is anticipation of something that didn't happen yet. All right. So sometimes we make the fear a lot bigger. Not much time. The ROI question. All right. So please, when you leave this session today, I want you to not fear the ROI question because I'm going to show you how to build slides for the CFO. All right. If you think your CFO is an ass and you don't have to admit that in public, all right, but the person holding the money, if you think that person is stingy or difficult, you know what? That's their job. Their job is to ask us difficult questions and we need to empathy map for them. We look, need to look at the world from their perspective. Telling the story effectively, structuring the contradictory statements, Alrighty, so there's a, there's a whole lot of challenges and a lot of it has to do with how we tell the story, the detail we show and the things we're afraid of. So let's move to the audience that you're presenting to. Give me the character, characteristics of your toughest audience. What would you consider a tough audience and what are the kind of things they'll do that freak you out or make you scared? Oh, emotional, impatient. All right, that goldfish attention span. What is that? Six seconds. All right, impatient. Just show me, show me the, show me the money. All right, confident and ignorant. Tech savvy, more than me. Defensive. 
not having clarity, think they know best, defensive, doubtful, no response. Oh, that's the worst. No response. Oh, people freak me out if they, if they can't show me, you know, what they're feeling or what they're thinking. Egotistic. All right, let's explore a little bit because the word defensive jumps out there as the biggest one, which means a lot of people say defensive. What's, what's sitting behind defensive? What is sitting behind defensiveness? Tell me in the chat. Why are people defensive? Especially when it comes to this. Yeah, they don't want to accept something that they didn't expect. They're scared of change. Absolutely, Charlie. They fake focused on what they want and not what they actually need. They think they've got it figured out. Areas of their authority or accountability. They don't want to look bad. All right. Who's that? Olga. Amazing. Okay. They don't want to look bad. Very often when you start mapping journeys and when you start talking about what are, what the possibilities are and when you start showing what's broken, you're showing people up. You're ruffling their feathers. Okay. They're not liking it. And you know what? I don't believe anyone comes to work and say, I'm going to deliver a shit journey. I'm just going to deliver the worst moment of misery that I, I can possibly do today. I don't think people do that, but it happens by default. All right. So more than getting together your presentation, you need to look at the audience and what's going on with them. What are the emotions that they have? And what are the emotions you want to evoke? You're actually designing an audience journey. All right. So you're designing an audience journey so that you can tell the audience about the journey that you've created for customers. Excellent. So let's look at our next, at our next perspective. So how much time do you use to prepare for a given presentation where you're sharing a journey or where you are trying to convince people this is the best thing to do, where you're asking them for funding, where you're asking them for buy-in, permission. All right, so I'm seeing it hovering there. Someone spending a lot of time preparing. All right, so that, that's number of hours, and we made the top of the scale about 100. All right, so that's like half a week, a little bit more than half a week, three days, four days. All righty, now I'm going to ask you a question. Do you ever rehearse and record yourself doing your presentation? Charlie, I'm seeing a definitive yes nod. All right. If you hate it, like me, still do it, all right? Because the, the practice makes you eloquent and makes you confident. All righty, so I want to ask you, what happens after you made a presentation? So let's say you positioned next steps or a funding request or an activation of journeys. What usually happens next? So if you had to plot the the audience journey, what happens after you present it? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Miles and miles of nothing. <laughs> Just this void of nothingness. <laughs> All right. In journey terms, what do we call that? <laughs> white space. Okay, lots of white space. All right. So you ask for decisions and actions. There's some project charges, a pile of nothing, another meeting to discuss the actions from the previous meeting, all right, more meetings, more delays, all right, <laughs> all right, so so we do these workshops all over the world, and we pretty much get the same results any, anywhere that we ask this question, all right, so a long-term project's dying slowly, yes, it's this graveyard of zombie projects that have, that have died, all right, and then when you ask and when you present the stuff, you have a lot of work to do. Yes, you generate lifetime employment for yourself <laughs> by pitching your journeys. All right. So let's see. 
let's see if we can start transforming what happens here. All right. And I'm going to just flip to my flip to my other screen. So I want to share with you a blueprint that's very, very powerful in terms of uh, sharing the context, because I think very often the context to what we're trying to do is missing. So I'm going to take a few moments and I'm going to just present this experience oriented enterprise blueprint to you before we start actually planning for our presentation so i love a one pager that everything can fit onto so at the moment it's one of those slides where people squint i can see you squinting to see all of the detail on that slide but don't worry i'm going to show you what's inside of this so at the midline there we're separating this ecosystem in terms of the world of the customer and the world of the employee. All right. So first we are going to go into the world of the customer and I'm going to show you, I think, a few mistakes that people make. They view the customer as a single entity and they view the customer still through the lens of their product. And we want to start shifting this. So we want to view the customer through the lens of the family, the community that they belong to, and there's a lot more happening in their life than our product. I saw the word arrogancy. We as brands have become arrogant. We think that customers are thinking about us all the time. They're not. They're only thinking about us when we piss them off. So we need to start repositioning how we view the customer and we need to view them through the lens of the relationships, health, career. They've got a whole lot of things bothering them at the moment. We also need to look at their goals, their needs, their fears, and their stories. And we need to make the customer come alive in our presentations. Now, Julia will tell you they, they have some amazing templates for personas. And you can do beautiful personas. But you need to bring the customer in the room because even those personas make them too neat. It packages them as a, as a, as a one-dimensional creature. All right, and we actually need to make them come alive with video, with telephone calls, with sound clips. And we need to show that, you know, our product is being prosperous because it serves a need. It solves a problem for our customer. All right, then equally important, if not more important, is the employee. All right, and there's a ton of companies doing work on customer experience. But it's like putting lipstick on a bulldog. They treat their employees terribly. And we need to start looking at the employee as well as someone who belongs to a family, who belongs to a community, someone that's got a lot more happening in their life than just their employment contract with the brand. They've also got goals, needs, story and fears. And you know what? The first word that came up when you said what's what 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 is challenging for you in terms of the toughest audience is emotional. And unfortunately, I've got news for the person who don't like emotional people. All right, even you are emotional and, and humans are messy. And that's why it's tough to design for them. And that's why it's tough to get them to change. Then in the middle there, we've got this bottle of secret sauce. And I call that your brand experience essence. So if I strip off your logo, and I take what's in this bottle and I spray it on every email, every system, every human. Will I know that it's distinctly you? Have you distilled your essence so that we can feel that it's you? All right. So this is an important part of the process is distilling this essence. And when you show executives, I love doing an immersion exercise where I show them how big the gap is between what they believe the essence is and what the actual experience is. Now, that's a bit of pain tactics, because if you can make them feel an emotion, they will change. All right. I believe there's two reasons why we change. The one is pain. We want to move away from the pain. The other one is pleasure. We want to move towards pleasure. Now, if you can combine these in your journeys, show them the pain, show them the pain the customer's in, show them the pain the brand is going to be in if they don't shift, and then show them nirvana, show them the aspirational side where they need to move towards. All right, and then we've got all these share, uh, stakeholders. So I'm going to show you just the, how we do stakeholder mapping later. But we've got our shareholders. They want money. We've got suppliers. There's a ton of expectations happening here. We've got teams inside our organization. They look at the employee value proposition. 
They want more than just employment. They want to belong somewhere. And they want a leader to look after them. And I had our illustrator draw this guy tongue in cheek with a crown. But you know what? Our leaders are, are in a crisis today. They, they, for the first time, they realize that some of the cultural fault lines running through organizations is now being challenged. Now that we're not sitting with each other. Now that we don't use the archaic leadership tactics, micromanaging, looking over someone's shoulder. Now we've got to really trust people. All right. And then we get to the business design. Now, a lot of your journeys will die. There will be beautiful posters on the wall. All right. And they will die because we haven't looked at what needs to change inside the organization. There's a business design that might help or hamper your efforts. So you need to look at what's going on in the culture, what's the structure of the organization, what's some of the existing contracts that we have between teams, between people, what are the systems, what is inherent in the identity. We've got people on this call that work for banks that have been in existence for 150 years. Do you know how much baggage you schlep along in 150 years, stuff that no longer serves you from an identity and from a structures perspective, processes, environment, now we all work in distributed environments. All right, so this is a bit of the context. Then you've got your customer journeys. And with the journey, you've got to start with the end frame. I had a workshop this morning with a group of leaders and I, had, I, give, I gave them a book and we went to the last page of the book and they wrote their essence on the last page of the book. So you start with the end in mind and then you almost retrofit, you almost reverse engineer your journey. And you talk through step by step, what happens to your customer? How do you want them to feel? What do you want them to say? And ultimately, how's that going to drive value to your business? And the same for your employee journey. Start with the end frame. Tell me how you want an employee to feel when they are in an interaction with your brand. Not how they feel about the brand, how they feel about themselves. Do they feel self-assured? Do they feel tired? Do they feel hopeless? Do they feel depressed? How do they feel? And through each of those moments, have you taken your essence and poured it into this journey? All right. So that gives you a canvas and you won't shift the organization unless you look at all of these ingredients. All right. It's like baking a cake. Who loves baking? Give me a yellow thumb. Who likes baking? Okay. Corinne, I see you love baking. Julia, I see you love baking. Marlies, oh, NH, I see you love baking as well. So this is like taking a recipe book, but you leave three of the ingredients out. So if you want to do customer-centered change, you need to put all of the ingredients in the cake. Otherwise, it's not going to fly. All right, quickly, the steps. So enroll your players and spectators often. These journeys fail because you haven't brought people on the journey with you. You've gone in a dark room somewhere. You've designed these journeys and now you're presenting them to people and say, hey, thou must. Thou must now do this and this and this and we must change in this way. But they've never had an input. The next thing is you need to discover what is really going on on the ground. What are your competitors doing? And we see competitors very differently today. Apple is a competitor of all of you. Mobile phones are your competitors because they compete for attention. So we don't just look at the traditional categories. Then I spoke about your essence. You want to distill your essence, boil down, boil all the impurities out of the environment and say, what can be, what can be, be true to? We had a lovely chat with Joe Pine last week and he was talking about authenticity. So are you real, real or are you fake, fake? Or are you fake, real or are you real, fake? So deciding how true can you be to your brand promise. And then we reimagine the journeys. And then we actualize through storytelling and through assigning ownership of those journeys in the organization. All right. So what do you think of this blueprint? Give me a shout out if you like it. Um, Julia, is there a way to get a copy of this to people? So if I can give you a PDF, maybe we can mail it to you folks. If it's going to help you, you know, I would love for you to have it. And, you know, Strip my name off it, show it to your executives. And if it's going to help you sell into the organization that this, this is a mammoth task, all right? This is not just, you know, we're fiddling with one thing. You're actually touching every part of the organization. And that's why people are going to get pissed off at you because they're going to feel like you're on their territory. 
All right. So I wanted to give you that context. Now, please have your piece of paper. We are going to do some journey origami now. And Julia, I know we're not doing this in the Express here, but the reason why we're not doing it is just because we have so little time. All right. And there will be prizes. All right. The person with the coolest journey will get a prize. So I'm going to quickly stop sharing my screen. And Julia, if you can just spotlight me for a moment. Fantastic. All right. So you're going to take your page. Now you need to keep up with this. And this is also an exercise in listening. All right. So Ahmed, there's a question from Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed, I created this in Keynote. And if you want to know how, you can always mail me and I'll show you the back end of this. All right. So you want to fold with me. So you want to take your A4 page and we're going to fold it in half. All right. Like this. And you want to make like really nice, uh, strong fold marks. All right. And then we are going to fold it in half again. But this time we're going to fold it like this. All right like this so you should now have folded it twice all right then we're going to fold it again so it looks like that so you've just taken it like that and you're folding it like that all right we're going to unfold it and then you're going to fold it this way all right make your fold marks nice and nice and strong because we're going to create a journey from this all right and you unfold it now now, everybody needs, needs to listen like, oh, wait, wait. Okay, unfold it all. So this is a very archaic spreadsheet, okay? So now, just fold with, with me. You're going to fold it in half like this, and you're going to fold it in half like this. So I want you to have one corner closed, and one corner is open. So you can, you can, you can see all four pages in the one corner here. You want to keep that to your bottom. And then your folded corner is, is to the top. This corner can't fold open. All right. So now we are going to tear that closed corner out. All right. Everybody with me? We're tearing the closed corner out. All right. So we've got a square that comes out. And now if we unfold it, it's going to look like this. All right. If yours didn't come out right, you're just going to have to improvise. All right. So quickly flick, flick on your camera. Hold up your page so I can see what you've, what you've created. Let's see. I'm just going to flick you on gallery view so I can see what you created. All right. Excellent. Look at you. What a great audience. All right. So you can frame yourself. Johan, take a few pictures for us. Look how beautiful. Amy, stunning job. Annette, wonderful. Alejandro, wonderful. Excellent. Nicholas, fantastic. Caroline, Carolina, amazing job. All right. So what I've done now is I've just put some, some lines there for you with a Sharpie. So I'm going to quickly show you how we're going to do this journey. Now follow with me. Like a cartoon strip. Your journey is going to start, it's going to start here at the top, all right? So it's starting here in this corner, and it's going to run all the way. So we've created moments in this journey. It's going to run all the way. And remember, we want our customer to stay in this loyalty loop. This is where your journey is going to end, all right? So it's going to end, run all the way around, and end there. All right, excellent. So... Now, the piece that came out, the piece that you tore out in the middle, all right, I want you to do the following on that piece. And I'm going to show you now. All right, I want you to create this little template here. So you've got your moment of truth, and we're going to choose that moment of truth. So moment expectations magic and misery all right everybody got the template so i've got my moment and i'm going to put my moment name here and i'll give you instructions in a little bit expectations magic and misery all right
Everybody done with the with the template? Excellent. So now I am going to tell you a story. And while I tell you the story, you are going to map the journey on your journey origami. All right. So, and some of you have heard this story before. So you can choose to draw moment by moment and also write just the name of that moment in, in customer language. So let me tell you the story. And this is a personal story, all right? So I have a bit of a confession. I have three children and I hate shopping. I am a total domestic disaster. So when my husband travels, all right, the household is under severe strain. So this is how it would go on a Wednesday afternoon. I would get home at 5.30 after picking the kids up from school and the kids would run to the fridge. I want to drink some milk and they come, mommy, mommy, there's no milk in the fridge. All right, so you're going to do a little shopping journey for a mother with three children on a weekday afternoon. Now, I engaged with a bunch of store managers of this particular grocery store and I asked them, where does your journey start? And they said, our journey starts on the landing strip. Now, that is the area of the store where they have all those crates where you enter the store. There's usually like specials and all kinds of barricades going on there in that, in that landing strip. You with me? All right. So I said to them, no, 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 the journey doesn't start there. The journey starts when I realize there's no bread and there's no milk. So now I yell at the kids, come on, honeys, we need to get back in the car, fasten your safety belts, we're going to the store. All right. They're not very happy with me. I'm not happy with them in any case. So we drive to the store and we weave our way through traffic. All right. You can map the journey as I'm telling you the story. So we weave our way through traffic. What's the first thing I need to do when I get to the store? I need to find parking. All right. I find a parking in the parking lot and I look next to me and there is a big white 4x4 four four car. And I glance out at the car and I see it's one of the moms from school. I refer to her as gym mom all right don't tell her she's always dressed in gym clothes she's skinnier than me she wears makeup she's beautifully make made up she's just come from gym but the makeup is like flawless all right <laughs> i see all right she's got a nicer car than me she's got a smaller ass than me so what do i do i fake smile and i wave all right and i tell my kids if they make me angry in the store, I'm going to kill them. All right. So we get the kids out of the, out of the car. I wave at gym mom. I don't feel, I don't even want to look at my own ass because I know it's really big and I hate exercise. But I smile and I walk inside the store. All right. I usually put two kids inside the trolley so that I can keep them away from anything else. All right. So now, where does the store put the milk and the bread? in the you're right amy in the furthest corner okay so i've got to fight my way through the aisles i want to ask you again it's not about how i feel about the grocery store okay i like the grocery store i don't like myself because i put myself into this situation so i go through aisle one because i have to aisle one happens to be the aisle where they keep the crisps and the crackers okay so like by the end of aisle one, I'm yelling at my kids saying, keep your hands in the trolley. Don't ask me for anything. I'm not really your mother. No, I am really your mother. But if you don't shut up now, I brought you into this life 18 hours without an epidural. I promise you, I will take you out if I have to. All right. So what's my fight about? It's no longer about the bread and milk. It's about not saying the F word, not cursing about remaining a good mother to these children. All right, so finally I get my bread and my milk. You're still mapping my journey. Okay, so I have my bread and my milk in my trolley. 
So now I have to go through the last aisle. The last aisle is the cool drink aisle. All right. The cool drink aisle has vivid colors. Okay. Vivid colors. It's got sugar that will put my kids into a state of diabetes for the rest of their life. All right. So now I'm just doing like my deep breathing. All right. So I get to the end of the aisle. What do I need to do now? Get in the queue. What do they do at the queue to keep me a good mother? Nothing. Okay. They fill it with freaking sweets on both sides. I've got to, again, fight through a sugar rush. So if I stand in the queue long, what is the, if you had to plot it on a graph, how quickly do I become a bad mother in relation to all the sweets and all the people around me? Like you can plot a nice little graph there. All right. So the queues are long. There's not enough tools open. What do I do? I lose my shit. I have a meltdown and I say, where is the manager? All right. I'm furious. Who am I furious at? Yeah, I'm unleashing it on the manager, but who am I really angry at? Yeah, I mean, I'm angry at myself. So when you send me a customer satisfaction survey on my phone, like a day later, what do I tell you? Do I tell you that I feel shit about myself? Do I tell you my ass is big and I don't want to go to the store because I run into gym mom? No, I can't do that because I feel really bad. So the internal narrative is never what you see. All right, so we finally get out, we check out, we have the kids in the trolley, I push the trolley, I get to the car and gym mom is just like skipping along with her beautiful makeup and her perfect lipstick and her kids are dressed in white, okay, they're always freaking dressed in white and they're smiling with little pigtails and beautiful and her kids never, her kids never make a fuss like mine, all right. So I load the kids in the car, I get home. All right, and that's my shopping journey. So how do I feel about myself? I feel inadequate. I feel shameful. I feel uh, terrible at organizing. Will I ever tell the store that? No, I won't. I won't ever because I don't want another human being to know about the story that happened inside of me. So the experience, we often map the experience that happens outside of a person, but we rarely map the experience that happens inside the person. All right. And that's really the story we want to tell is the experience that happens inside the person. So if you look at that journey you've just mapped, I want you to look at the highest emotional moment in that journey. And that is our moment of truth. And like I did now, I invite you, when you present your journeys, create some drama in that journey, all right? Because drama keeps people gripped. I saw a lot of you smile and I saw a lot of you show deep empathy. You want to just rescue my poor children from that trolley. Pock, I can see you wanted to just, I don't know, throw some sweets at my kid so I don't use the F word that much, all right? So use drama, use storytelling. Um, and bring the customer into it. So I take a lot of video material. Now that we're co-designing journeys with customers on Zoom, I have those recordings and I interlace that into my presentation so I can get the real story. We use Lego Series Play a lot. We show the models of people building what's hard about life for them. Alrighty, how did those journeys go? Now, if you haven't scanned that WhatsApp code, uh, I'm going to flip it up in a moment again so you can scan that group because I want you to take a picture of your journey that you've done and I want you to post it to that group because we're going to do a prize giving later and I'd love to see how you portrayed me, all right? <laughs> Not a drawing competition, but let's just see. Maybe you drew me skinnier than what I feel. All right, fantastic. So let me quickly flip up that part of the present. Let me just flip up that uh, that WhatsApp code. All right, so you can send us a copy of, oops, oops, I just killed my presentation. All right, let me do this. All right, so if you've got your phone ready, I'm going to give you that WhatsApp code. All right, you got it on the screen. My team just showed me. You seeing that WhatsApp code? All right, so lift your, lift your phone. Open your camera and you should get that code and you're going to send us that journey. 
Julia, maybe we can do a nice little blog post or something where we show people's journeys. All right. My team will take the best one and capture it into the Express. Yeah. All righty. So for that moment of truth, while you're doing that, for that moment of truth, I want you to write, you know, what are the expectations in that moment from the customer? How can we create magic for the customer in that moment? And how can we avoid misery? Let's look at creating one, one innovation in the moment that you believe is the highest emotional peak in that journey. All right, I'm seeing some really great journeys coming through here. Oh, wow. Stunning. Okay, stunning. I just love how everybody's pushing through and using the technology and being on Zoom on their phone and trying to send the image as well done. All right. Everybody got the group? Stunning. I'm going to I'm going to move on and we will draw some prizes. Uh we will send the prizes to um to Julia and she will let you know she will let you know what you won. All right. So what I want to move on to now is helping you a bit with your presentation planning. And again, you are more than welcome to do this um, as 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 I as I show you. And I want you to think about this particular journey we've just done. All right. And I want you to think if you are going to be presenting to the leadership of this grocery store, of this uh, fast moving consumer goods store. How would you structure that presentation? All right. And I want to show you quickly. And again, I've done I've done an origami template here. All right. And I've just done it like this. And, and I plan all of my presentations on paper. All right. So before I present, I sometimes use A4 papers and I scatter them around on the floor and I reorganize them and I and I physically draw. I find the process of planning it like this, just really, really tapping into a different part of my my emotions and my creativity. So the different parts here that's really important is first to do your audience planning. All right. So who is my audience? And how do I want them to feel? All right. So in this case, let's say we were presenting to the leadership of this fast moving consumer goods uh, store. Let's see. How would we want them to feel? So when I present to them, let me throw something out there. When I present to them, I want them to feel enough pain so that I can get them to change. All right. What else do I want them to feel? I want them to feel like there's a better way of doing things. There's an aspirational place where they might make more money. They might feel confident. They might feel more successful about themselves. They might feel prouder about the stores that they're managing. All right. So pride is a really, really good way to motivate people. I also look at my, my audience. If I look at leadership today, what do you think are leaders lying awake about at three o'clock in the morning? What's a leader's biggest fear? Let me know in the chat. What do you think? What is their biggest fear? Failing. Costs. All right, what's going to happen if they don't make enough money? 
they're going to lose face and eventually they'll lose their job. All right, making losses, being caught off guard. Yes, Samuel, we've got to work so hard to just protect ourselves from ourselves and our colleagues. Absolutely. Imposter syndrome is real, people. It's real. Reputation. Yeah, we don't want to lose face. Questioning authority. Absolutely. Meeting expectations. Yeah, the pressure on leaders are big. So when you present to them, you've got to have this hat on to say, I'm presenting to someone that might not feel that great about themselves. They might look okay, but they've got a lot of fears. So is there anything I can do in my presentation to show them what's in it for them? All right, then what we usually do, and that is why, who said the 167 slide pack? Okay, 167 slides. Okay, what we usually do, the next question, what do you want them to do? We wait until slide number 166, and then we tell them what we want them to do. And by that time, they're tired and they're no longer listening. The best advice I got, and I have a few, few people that were in our Journey Architect program last week, our Customer Journey Architect program, and I said to them, Tess is going, yes. Tess, do you remember? Tess, what did I say about the order of the slides? Tess, tell them. Tell them, what did I say? Reverse the order. So it doesn't help that you tell them what you want or what it is that you want to do right at the end of it. Basically understand, show them what the pain, what the what the pain point is, then what the ideal situation is, and start with a solution. This is what we want to do, and then start unpacking how we want to do it. Don't start with all of the detail and all the grocery list of things that you want to get done because you're going to lose them. They're going to get bored. So put the meat of it right at the front so you get their attention right at the beginning. So six seconds attention span. Thank you very much, Tess. If you build up by slide 166, they're tired. They're no longer listening. Tell them right at the start, what do you want from them? I want you to understand how bad it is. I want you to look at our ideas and approve them. I want you to make funding available. All right, be clear about what you want. All right, don't skirt around this ROI, fuzz it up. Hide what you actually want in the slides. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Tell them up front. And what I can tell you, if you follow this advice, your presentations are going to stand out from everybody else's because it's going to be honest. It's going to be to the point. All right. Then the next column there, you're going to ask, what do they need to know? So what do you want to tell them? What do they need to know? And what do they want to know? Because those things aren't necessarily the same. All right. The... CFO needs to know that the company is going to be in a lot more trouble three years from now if he doesn't follow your advice, okay? What he wants to know is show me the money, show me the ROI, show me the short-term results, all right? But we know CX doesn't work like that, all right? Unless you've got massive failures that you're fixing or you do a massive optimization, you're not necessarily going to show results in three months. I've had programs where I showed results in four months, but it was really, really in broken environments. So when there's a lot of shit, you can actually great, get great results. All right, and then your storyline, like Tess said, and I'm going to unpack that storyline for you. I want to also recommend a few books for you to read. But the storyline, you're going to position pain versus pleasure, pain versus pleasure. Show them the pain. Show them what's going to happen if they don't listen to you. Show them the pleasure. Show them what's going to happen if they do listen to you. All right. And you've got to be confident. If you're not confident about selling your ideas, they're not going to buy it, no matter how beautifully the Expressia does the journeys for you. All right. So in that story planning, and I want to recommend this book to you, okay? If you have not heard about it, Dan Rome, Draw to Win. Has anyone heard about this book? Okay. It's a very easy book to read. Do not get the Kindle version. Get the paper version. People, there's no, it's filled with beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little pictures. He shows you exactly, you know, how to do your presentations. There's a structure to it. We've won some of the biggest pitches because we follow the structure in this book. In our proposals, in our journeys, in whatever we're pitching to leadership, we follow this. All right, fantastic. Johan has put it in the chat there, and I'm not getting any money from Dan Ram. He's just an awesome guy. He's got some online training as well. He's a fantastic guy. All right, so his structure works like this. You are like a 
journalist, okay? Who, how much, where, when, how, why. And then I love putting in a stakeholder map and doing my stakeholder mapping before I go into my presentation and prioritizing my journeys. And I'll talk about those two aspects in a little bit. All right. So on your who, you want to position in your journey, who are the characters in your journey? Who's the hero? Who's the victim? Who's the villain? Okay, and bring a little bit of drama into your journeys. Then you want to use graphs. So how much do you want to change this journey? How much money do you need? How much effort are you going to spend? How much uh, human resources do you need? Then where does this journey take place? Position, you know, is it a, a, a phone journey? Is it an online journey? Is it a phone and an online? Is it a face-to-face -face journey? So use images to sell your journeys. When do you want to change this journey? Or when does these journeys usually break? How? How are you going to do that? You know, and how are you going to measure? ROI, are you going to measure happiness? Are you going to measure effort? Why are you changing the journeys? Why are you proposing this change? All right. And then I want to quickly talk to you about the stake, stakeholder map. So this is, a, this is a lovely, lovely structure for stakeholder maps. On the one axis, you've got interest. So the interest people are showing and on the other axis you've got influence now if you are presenting to people of high influence and high interest you've got an easy job all right if you're presenting to people with high influence and low interest you've got a problem all right so you need to shift their interest if you are presenting to people with high interest and low influence those are your cheerleaders you need them to feel good about yourself all right. If you're presenting to people low influence, low interest, you keep them informed and you try and move them, but you don't spend too much effort. Your effort should go into your high influence, low interest people. And I suggest when you present to management, take a wing person with you, a wing man or a wing girl. All right. And let them check out the people, you know, who asks questions. Now that we've got Zoom, we can watch people on video if you can convince them to switch on their video. All right, and then your journey prioritization framework. Again here, take your ideas and map them on these axes. Impact versus effort. So high effort, high impact. We know those things are going to take long. Charlie, I see you nodding. If we look at high impact and low effort, that's where your quick wins sit. You want to start with that. And you can actually take your journey ideas and plot it against this. All right. So this structure that comes out of Dan Rome's book, I literally take a page like this and I fold it and I plan my entire presentation on an A3 page and then I digitize it. And sometimes I do it exactly like I've done here on the, on the slide pack. All right, so that is really, that is really the structure that I wanted to talk through with you. So now we are going to do a very quick exercise. And that exercise, I want you to take either an idea that you want to pitch to someone, and I want you to use this framework to develop that idea. And then we have an audience here, and I want some participation where you can pitch your idea. So let me show you. Sorry, I'm just going... <laughs> My slides are all building. You see, that, that's what happens with fancy slides and, and it builds like this. Now you've got to wait for me to get through them. Okay, so I want you to take an idea that you, that you want to work on and we are going to unpack that idea in a, in a bit more detail. Before we get there, I want to quickly show you the power of images and that's why I said, do not ever put your entire journey map on the screen because people are going to squint and you're going to lose their attention. They're going to go, whoa, there's a lot of detail here. I'm not sure whether I've got the appetite for that. The detail is incredibly important. It's important to capture that detail. And it's wonderful that we have the most amazing tools available to do that. That's your living documents. All right. When you show people and when you want to shift people, you make them curious, and the way you make them curious is by showing them amazing imagery. You want to make them so curious that they go, please share, me, share with me the link of that map. I want to go through it. And when people comment a lot on your journey maps, which 
uh, Expressia does beautifully uh, the commenting on the map, then you know people are interested and they engage. But I want to show you a quick few examples just of striking imagery. So we have an illustrator and he creates these beautiful images for us. He makes these characters come alive. They look like superheroes. This is what a, a call center journey looked like. We call this the journey of care. And we use these images to train call center staff to deal with the journeys very differently. All right, so this is what we've done for a customer. And I don't work in that call center, but I can follow these pictures. So I greet, there's a customer screaming at me. I have a fight or flight reaction. My lizard brain tells me it's dangerous. I need to breathe. While I'm breathing, I'm filling my body with oxygen and I'm listening, all right? And the way I tell the customer I'm listening is I'm narrating. Yes, sir, I hear what you're saying. I would have been angry too. All right, so I can follow step by step what happens in this journey. This is another journey. I'm showing very high level detail here, but that makes people curious to go into my detailed maps and look at the moments. All right, this is another journey we did for Kia and it worked like a comic, like a comic, like a comic book. This is a girl, we had her in one of the customer co-design sessions. Her name's Pearl. We created this character around this real customer that were in the co-design sessions. She built Lego journeys with us and she used to use public transport and she used to walk in the rain. And then she heard people talk about a Kia and she dreamed about having her own car. And eventually she got through this mountain of paperwork. She got a loan from the bank and she could have her own car. She was so proud. And where Kia expected the moment of truth, the biggest emotional moment to be when the first time car buyer comes into the showroom and they come and collect their car with the bow on the car, they got it completely wrong. The customers told us, that's an intimidating moment. I'm so scared I'm going to wreck my car that I bring someone with me to drive the car out of that small space. Only when I park my car in the garage am I happy that my car is safe. That's my moment where I can relax. You know, sometimes I sit in the garage in the car for a few hours just to appreciate the car. All right, so these are some of the images. So what I want you to do is you are all working on journeys. And if you're not, you can use my little journey of going to the grocery store. And I want you to take this template and I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, okay? To take this template, and I want you to write a pitch for a change that you want to make to a journey or a change you want to make to my journey that I painted earlier. And in that pitch, you're going to make a personal connection, all right, with your audience. You're going to tell them what the stakes are and what kind of change you want to make. You're going to look at the characters in your story. Who do you want to make this change for? Where did you meet these characters? And here you can really get clear about, you know, the customers. Her name was Pearl and she came to one of the co-design sessions and we learned from her that the moment of truth is not the one in the showroom. You want to show the problem. The problem is that it's a very intimidating moment and we actually want to transform that moment. Show people how you're going to solve it. Give them the future vision and tell them why you are the person to lead this initiative. All right, I'm going to keep this structure up here. So I want you to take a specific example that you might be working on right now, and I want you to give it a go. How would you motivate this change? Using empathy, let the audience connect with you, tell them what the stakes are, who are the characters, where, where did these characters come from? What's the problem? How are you going to solve it? What's the future vision? And why are you the best person to solve it? All right, everybody clear? You know your instructions, you're gonna go give it a shot. Excellent. So in the chat, there is a, um, there is a question about, give me an example of this pitch. All right, so let me give you an example. So if I was, if I was working for this grocery store as a CX manager, I would start my presentation saying, you know what, I'm a mom of three kids and it's really hard to go to a shop with three children. Who can identify with that? And 
you know, our target audience are mothers with kids that usually bring their kids shopping with them. You know, I met one of these mothers in a co-design group and her biggest problem isn't buying things. It's remaining a good mother while she's in the store. The problem is we put so many distractions that make it hard for mothers to remain a good mom in the store. So I would like to propose that we change the journey in this specific way where mothers with little kids, let's create a fast lane for them with milk and bread that are very accessible, something like that. All right, I'm shooting here from the hip. So my future vision is that moms would actually look forward to coming to the store. So let me actually tell you what these store managers came up with. They, they have a loyalty program called the Smart Shopper Card, and they came up with the concept of a smart nanny that you could book, and the nanny would push your kids through the aisles. You could book her as you're leaving the house, half an hour wait time, you'll meet your nanny, and she'll actually push the kids through the store, blowing balloons and singing songs and things like that. All right, I hope that clarifies it. So take a challenge that you're working on, use this structure and construct a quick presentation where you want to convince someone to change something. Excellent. So who wants to take a shot at giving us this elevator pitch of the change they want to make? So this is your opening statement and then you can go into the detail. Who wants to take a shot? Let's get some volunteers. Okay, Pock, go for it. Uh, Pock, we're not getting very good audio from you. Let's just quickly see. Do you have a, do you, uh, let me just see if you've got your microphone selected. Okay, fantastic. She's showing a journey there. I'm seeing very creative journeys, but I'm not getting audio. Pock, I'm getting very bad audio. Is it just me? Yulia, let me just see, are you also getting bad audio? Yeah, yeah, me too. All right. Pog, let's see. Do you have another microphone that you can try? Here we go. There we go. Yeah, just to have you guys micromanaging fewer approvals. So the micromanager who had to look at everyone's everything. And then that led to a COVID response that took from February, March, and then finally we sent something in April. And COVID is such, you know, <laughs> it's so sad and sensible. It was, it was horrible. So my suggestion is that we get leaders and coaches together with in individual contributors to know that, hey, look, we do a faster turnaround time. We can coach as close faster, and we will be able to get a higher stock price. Um, why me? I have experience in the UX, so I know the user interviews, the journeys of, um, of what it's like to become a and then a little bit of an individual contributor. Oh, stunning, stunning. I love the imagery. The, the audio wasn't very good and I heard bits and pieces, but I love the drawings and how clear you've gotten about this coaching relationship. I love that little speech bubble there. So well done. All right, Fox, thank you. Thank you so much for that feedback. I wish the, the sound was a little bit better so that we could ca catch 100% and not just 70%. All right, anyone else? Oh, I see Annette wants to volunteer. She dropped off. Oh, and go for it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Annette, go for it. Just unmute yourself.
Oh, did we lose Annette again? Annette, if you're hearing us, you can just unmute. There we go. Okay, there we go. So I um, how you want to summary? I dropped off and then went back on again. So what's that's is all right. Like so tell us. So tell us your tell us your elevator pitch, just a summary of what okay. you did there. Show Fantastic. it on the screen so as well. My elevator pitch, it's half drawn because I was trying to get back on the call. But my elevator pitch is, have you been affected by COVID? Where? At home, at school, which is also at home. Uh, at work, which is also at home. <laughs> at the gym, which is at home. <laughs> How? Let me see. How have you been affected? Well, we've all been affected, right? And how often? So really essentially what the elevator pitch is, is I've taken 30 years of process improvement. I've actually designed the floor of the shopping experience that you hate so much. I have, <laughs> that we all hate, we all know. We all know, you gotta go to the bread and the eggs and the milk in the far corners. It's not by accident, people, we know this. Um, but I've taken 30 years of process improvement. I. Uh, was fired twice on the same day from that job. I'll, that's another story. And so now I've decided <laughs> to create an online home optimization company. That home optimization company will take Lean Six Sigma tools and bring it to the masses. I am certified in Lean Six Sigma and uh, have, like I said, so many years of experience helping corporations. And now I'm going to take it to personal people. Um, I've had five client slash friends where I've helped one person save $2,000 on buying the wrong dining room table. As an example, another friend reorganized her basement and another friend optimized her bookshelf and she returned $600 of books she didn't need. So, oh wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm like running at a furious rate, but I have a uh, my elevator pitch is pretty much I need help from anyone that would like to help me because right now I have all these ideas and an empty Instagram account. I don't know how to collect oh, wow. emails. I don't know how to do any of it, but it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm, yeah. So my elevator um, pitch is if you've been affected by COVID and you want a professional that has 30 years of corporate process improvement manufacturing experience, to help you in your home, I'm here for you, online and in person. So what I would recommend to you, I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I, I love it. It's like Black Belt meets Marie Kondo, meets like yes. the new me that's lighter and the new me that actually needs less shit around them. All right, I love it, I yeah. love it. So name, what I would recommend was, for you is, my, was, is, yeah, go for it. Uh, get sparked, spark your home, spark your life, spark yourself. I love it. I love it. So create a journey for someone that wants to work with you step by step, how you would work with them and look at, you know, what are the moments of magic that they'll experience in that journey? And what are potentially some of the hard things? Because once people yeah. start letting go of stuff, okay, they freak out. So I would map that journey and I would be more than happy if you map that journey. All right. Map it on New Expressia. Send it to me and you and I can hop on a call. I'd love to look at it and give you feedback. And if I can support you in your journey of, of bringing this to individuals, Thank let's you. do it. Well, Fantastic. You will have it done. Done and done. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Fantastic. And thank you for sharing. All Thanks, right. Guys. Who else? Who else wants to share? Okay, let's see. Let's see. One more person and then we're going to start closing. Let's see. Can I try? Fantastic. Polly, Polly, go for it. I'm seeing Polly's hand. It was there another hand. Let me just quickly see. There we go. Hi. Polly. Hello. Hi, Polly. So, uh, so I'll speak to you as if you're, you're my client. Um, so our distributors love our project but they're heartbroken that they're having to sell our competitors because we can't guarantee delivery dates or inventory. So I know that um, 
Internally, we are a federation of businesses with our, and we have disparity between our staff and funding. But if we come together and find creative solutions to come over that, and we can create some enterprise solutions so that our distributors, we can give them real-time inventory, give them a dedicated, you know, we can guarantee shipping and delivery dates, then they can service their clients with our products the way they want to, their whole reason they partnered with us and help them succeed. Because uh, the stakes are we're losing business and we want to, so for the pain and everything that's gonna take to work internally, the big payoff is not only increase revenue uh, for us, but also re-strengthen those partnerships with our distributors. That's yeah, fantastic. Mad. Well done, Polly. And you know what? The way these things work is the more you iterate, you know, the clearer you can get. So if your question is, if, if you had a really strong start there and you elevate it, do you want to have better relationships with our distributors? They are. Do you want to do you want to lose less business to our competitors? So we've identified the weaknesses is in our distribution network and you list, this is where the pain is. And okay. you know what, let me show you how bad it is. Let me show you what we've lost in terms of disappointing people. And you show them a graph or you show them an infographic with the number of packages or the number of products that you've missed out. So think about drawing this with the biggest impact and then you can start creating the slide pack because you've got a you've got a compelling case there and you kind of know what you need to do to fix it but yeah. it's the convincing yeah this is this has been a great session cuz that's we've been i've been caught up in all the details so this has really helped cut yeah. through so thank and you and even is... and even you were trying to convince yourself in the first yeah. couple of sentences and then yeah. you got to it then yeah. you got to it so that's why i really recommend Draw it out, go and stand in front of a wall, put your phone up, record yourself. Go okay. when, when you waffle, when you start losing your train of thought, you go, no, stop. Let me look at my pictures. This is where we are right now. This is where we could be. This is the pain we're in. This is the success we can have. This is what's going to take to get from pain to success. Do you want to do it? You in or out? So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Like that pain to success yeah. like that. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done, Polly. Excellent. Thank Let's you. Give Polly a hand. All right. Well done. Thanks for volunteering. All righty. How are we doing? Did we have another hand, Julia, that I missed? We have two, actually. We have Kalpana and MC. Oh. <laughs> oh, go for it. Go for it. We've got time. Kalpana, let's start with you, okay? Maybe you spotlight it as well. All right. So, hi, everybody. This is uh, Kalpana. So um, I made a small presentation. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see clearly, but then I would like to uh, start off by saying that, so we have a volunteer to develop an app for a solar installation company uh, so that uh, their agents can go and install app. They can go, their agents can go and survey uh, the homes they can install and then later on they can inspect if the solar panels are installed correctly at homes. So we developed an app for that. So uh, what we saw the problem was uh, even though we trained them, uh, the field service agents, but they were not using the app with full efficiently, uh, with full efficiency. So they were not tracking it uh, properly when they were about to start and go to the home. They were not tracking it properly when they were installing the panels and they were not even tracking it properly after they have installed. So the surveys and everything were a little off track. So the whole uh, use of the app, they were not using it properly. So here, uh, this is a small diagram. These are the field service agents. This is the app. And these are the questions that we asked to our customers that uh, are they tracking it on time? Are they updating it properly? So we, as a company, we saw that, uh, you know, we saw that we saw in the analysis that they were not using it properly. And then we suggested them uh, Einstein. And we also told them that we would partner with you and we would help you analyze if your agents are tracking it properly. And if, 
and you can exactly point out which particular agent is not updating the app and which particular agent is not doing it on time or if there is some lag due to internet connections there can be multiple reasons it's it's uh, by using the analytics and by uh, using einstein you can probably uh, eliminate uh, these excuses and find out the real problem why the agents are not actually uh, updating the app so this is probably uh, something that you can try as well so yeah that's something that i put up i love it i love it how you've drawn it out and how clear it becomes when you draw it out fantastic <laughs> thank you for sharing yep thank you All righty, well done. We have All right, who was our other that. person? <laughs> yeah, MC. Ah, mm. oh, thank you. Can I try please? And please comment, thank you. Uh, Barbara is a working adult who has to eat out frequently due to busy work schedule. She frequently finds it difficult to get enough vegetable and fruits intake as where and when she wanted. She is looking for a change for a better diet because a more nutritious diet with vegetables and fruits can give her more energetic to last throughout the day, less sick absence, improve focus, and maintain a high retention with the company. I am like Barbara as well because I'm also a working adult. I understand and that's why I made this special drink. It has five different vegetables and three fruits into one drink, no fridge needed, it's convenient and hassle-free because you just grab and drink. Sorry, uh, I finished. And can you give some comment, please? Thank you. <laughs> Where can I buy it? Please let me click here to buy now. Oh. I love the story of the vegetables and I love the I love the product. Wow. That is that is really 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 well done. I love I love that, and I love the health benefits because we all we all are prone to not live as healthy as what we want. I love this. I love the story, and and it was like quite suspenseful. I didn't know where it was going. Excellent. Well done. Ah, thank sure. you. Sure. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, All righty, and I got a beautiful message here. Let me just quickly comment here. Alejandro was writing this little story. Alejandro, do you want to share or are you shy? Let's see. Alejandro is more probably shy. All right, so let me read here. Sandra was arriving to the store and she felt tired. The office was hell and she was alone, again alone. Sandra entered the store with her three angels ready to fight them for the eternal sweets war and people that look at her with resentment with hate. Sandra was ready for the worst, but suddenly something happened. The store had made changes, amazing changes. Yes, they heard her prayers. The store had a new take and pay and go section with the most needed goods. It was a miracle. Sandra cried of happiness, no war no conflict just take pay and go <laughs> amazing well done just hear the drama in this little story and and we get taken with with that drama so you did an absolutely absolutely stunning 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 job so we are about to wrap up and then i'm gonna i'm gonna announce some prizes so let me just get the last few things um, I want to know, and I'm going to share my screen with you shortly. Um, I want to know how you feel now. Let me just share that, share that screen with you. All right. If you go to that menti screen. All right. How do you feel now? Just quickly, my team, are you seeing the menti screen? All righty. For some people, it's been a long day. How do you feel now? I'm seeing some inspiration, energized. All right, that makes me very, very happy. All 
All righty, nice little energy going there. Yeah, I get that tired. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been awake since five o'clock this morning. We've had many workshops today, and it's so wonderful being with you. It's amazing to spend time with people who want to improve themselves. And I want to say gratitude to you uh, for being here, for growing yourself, for spending time with other professionals. All right, and then I want to know of everything I showed you, what was your biggest learning in the session? What was your biggest learning in the session? Tell me what struck a chord. Absolutely. And the folks that are struggling to get into a mentee, you can put that in the chat as well. All right. To be confident. Absolutely. Storytelling is everything. Having a format for the presentation. Yeah. Energy storytelling, <laughs> getting the right emotion, absolutely. The power of pictures, yeah. I know you spend a lot of time on your journey map and there's a ton of detail, but don't show that to everyone. You wanna show images that evoke emotion. How to understand the customers, better step, steps to create a story, comic style maps, yes. You need the detail, but you need those high level maps as well. <laughs> that other woman suffer with my Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> I feel like I'm so home in this audience here. All right, fantastic, fantastic. So the last thing I want to say is there's magnificent tools out there. And if you want to create a presentation really, really quickly, I'm going to give you one of my secrets. You take the beautiful map that comes out of your Expressia and you put it in Prezi, all right? And then you animate it in Prezi to fly into the images, all right? And if someone wants to see the detail, you can always in Prezi go to the detail below, all right? Prezi is magical, 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 magical. And our friends at Expressia, the product is like superior. It is beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful uh, journey mapping tools out there. All right. So I am feeling incredibly, incredibly generous this evening. I want to give each of you a copy of my book and the video companion guide. How does that sound? You've, you've made my day. You've, you've gotten me through a hard day. Oh, Polly is so happy. For that, I'm going to need your email address, all right? And I'll be respectful about your email address. So you can either pop it for me on the WhatsApp group or you can pop it into the chat, all right? My team's going to grab those email addresses and they are going to add you to our online university. So you're going to get a link from me with a username and a password, all right? And I would be so happy if you could give me feedback on the book and the course, whether that's empowering you to create better journeys, because that's really why I wrote it. I want journeys not to suck anymore. And if we as a tribe go out there and we just improve one little thing and we inspire another person to create a beautiful journey, then service is going to suck less. People go, are going to be less unhappy, less miserable, less pissed off. And the world will be happier. So let's take the pissed offness out of the world by creating magnificent journeys. All right. Any questions? I thought I saw Claire. Claire, are you on Nicholas's thing? <laughs> yeah, he joined first and he was in he here for a little while and I took my phone in <laughs> and then and then he's in the background and he said, I have to listen. I have to come and listen. Hi, Nicholas. Claire's confusing <laughs> the crap out of me. I keep on saying, I know that woman. All right. All right. Fantastic. Surrounded by friends. All right. I will be. So what I want to say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you to my peeps and my cheerleaders that joined. Thank you to everyone in South Africa, in Kenya. Thank you to everyone that tuned in from the rest of the world. Thank you to you, Expressia and Julia. Let's just, we want to spotlight you. We want to give you a hand. 
this woman is amazing okay she had such a difficult time getting me to answer my emails and getting me organized and she just carries on she is magnificent she is a rock star and she puts on these amazing amazing events all right so Yulia big hand to you fantastic folks this is amazing I'm gonna be around if you've got any questions you can pop them in the chat I will be around and my email address I'll pop my email address in the in the chat if you've got any questions you drop me an email I might be a little bit slow so this is my email address I'm gonna give you brand loves email address as well because my my colleagues are sometimes a little bit faster than me all right fantastic so we've got a little dance that we want to teach you as we as we go out of the session all right it's called the Jerusalem okay have you heard of it okay okay so where's my friends in Kenya come on Juliet where's my Kenyan friends okay so you tap the heel of your one foot one two three four then the other one one two three four then you jump one two three four then we're gonna skip to the side one two three four one two three four forward one two three four one two three four tap the heel one two three four one two three four we're gonna do a jump one two three four we're gonna go to the side Heel. And heel. Fantastic, you're doing great, Charlie. Dancing with us, South Africans and Kenyans. Send me some of those uh, Star Wars pictures, right, Charlie? Don't forget. Excellent. I'm breaking my own rhythm here. Jerusalem. Oh, Corin looking beautiful there. Look at her dancing. Oh my word, fantastic. Juliet, you're doing a fantastic job there. And Clay, your imposter, Nicholas, confusing the shit out of me. All right. <laughs> Julia, thank you so much. You've been an absolute star. We love you. We give you a brand love, love. Yeah, we forgot to do our whole day something. Julia, this is for you. I'll put on my pink feathers. I've even got a dancing monkey for you, Julia. There you go. Nice looking, Marley. Sure, she's got a lot of props there. Thank you, everyone. You've been a rock star. Thank you, Johan. You did a stunning job. Thank you for the music. Excellent folks, we'll onboard you, we'll send you those details. Julia, thank you very much for everything you did. Excellent, thanks Claire. Olga, it was lovely seeing you again.
Chantal, thank you so much for today's energetic and great interactive session and for sharing the secrets of making a great, impactful presentation. Thanks everyone for being with us here today and I hope you'll grab those takeaways and will implement them into your future projects or presentations. Make sure to check out Expressia to easily map your customers' journeys with more than 70 free templates we've prepared for you, which you can find at expression.com slash templates. Thanks again. Stay tuned for our future events and take care.